Hi everybody, Stacy Wells here. How are y'all doing tonight? It's getting late. It's almost 11. But uh, late today, I got in my color art pigments. Um, the ones I just ordered, they're called Bright Blooms. And I just couldn't wait to try them until in the morning. So I have to work fast because I don't have much battery. But right before this, I recorded a video trying to do this one big bloom thing again, and it worked. The only problem was the video cut out somewhere in the middle, and I didn't want to post it because I didn't even get to the, uh, really the tilting part even. Um, so I just didn't, but I figured and I hope that I can do it again with this one, and it'll be even better because this has got my new pigments and it's also got my bright tone because I got it in um, at the same time and uh, I've been waiting on that because uh, the bright tone to me makes a big difference. I've been using my polyacrylic um, in lieu of it but it isn't the same. I'm having to sort of jerry-rig this table because it's not working right. So I'm gonna go kind of fast today to try to get this all in. If it cuts me off, I'll uh, show you this piece in the next video. Um, this is, these are all color art pigments um, this time. This is uh, boysenberry. Um, that's what we're gonna start with and I'll try to tell you how I've mixed these. Um, you take a little bit of the pigment and you mix it in some varnish, like bright tone, or in this case, I use my polyacrylic because I want to try to save my bright tone. Um, but you just put a little bit, just enough to dissolve the pigments in. And then um, after you get all your pigments dissolved um, in the varnish, you add your um, pouring medium, which consists of your Glidden Premium semi gloss house paint base three plus um, your um, bright tone, or if you don't have bright tone, you can use polyacrylic. Um, it works almost as well, but there's really no substitute for this bright tone. It is excellent. The lacing is better, you get more of it, and it's more intricate. The colors pop more. And they have more definition between them. Um, it's just better. Um, I can't really say enough about how much better it is. Um, I have to fix this again. Okay, now it's running that way, but at least it's not running the way it was. Um, okay, so this this bush purple is boysenberry. This is peacock feather. This right here is um, poppy red. And it's really not quite red. Their colors vary a whole lot from what they look like in the jar. I thought this was a brown. Um, it's not anywhere close to being a brown. If anything, it's more of a deep orange. But it's nowhere close to being a brown and that's what it looked like to me um, in the jar. When you mix them, they change a lot. So what I do, and I recommend anybody else doing, is um, when you mix them the first time, uh, dab a little bit of what you've mixed onto the top of the jar, and then you can see what it really looks like. So when you're making your next piece, you won't be guessing um, at what the color is you know, what it looks like mixed up, because this is sky blue, because like I said, they're very, very different. Um, what can look like a, like I said, a brown in the, um, in the jar is actually a, you know, more like a vermilion. Um, so it's very hard to, it's very hard to tell. And, uh, I do that with all of mine. I put a little bit on the top and then I can <coughs> tell what I'm doing 
This is Key Lime. I don't have too much paint on here, but I just don't care. I'm so excited about these colors. I just want to try them all. And I love the, that, or that kind of chartreuse color. That's so pretty. Um, I'm always pouring too much paint on these. I, I just have done it consistently. Um, I can't seem to help it. This one is, um, let's see, it's some kind of flower. Um, I'll have to look. Passion flower, maybe. I don't know. It's some kind of flower. Um, some kind of flower. Um, if you get the bright blooms, just look for the one that has the word flower in it. And, oh wait, that blue there is sapphire, not sky blue. This is sky blue. Alright, and then the last one I have is uh, a coral. Um, there's another word in the name, something coral. Okay, there we go. That's way too much paint. I know it is. I don't care. Um, now, in addition, on add, when I was mixing my colors, I've been adding a little bit of glue. After I um, get done getting my, um, look at that trying to sell over there already. After I get done um, pouring my pouring medium in and mixing that, I add uh, just a tad bit of white PVA. And um, then I stir that up, and then I add a little bit of silicone. I just like the way that does. Um, this cell activator is made of Amsterdam titanium white paint, a little bit of glue, um, one part paint, three parts Floetrol, one part glue, and a little bit of silicone. Because I think you can never get too much help making cells. And those things help make cells. So, I'm trying to get this where I can get to it best. It's got way too much paint up here and it's hard for me to do. I'm going to pour it down my shirt. Okay. Now, I like to blow them out with my mouth and then get the hair dryer. Easier said than done. Okay, I just poured paint everywhere, but I hope I got enough of it blown out. Now I get the hair dryer and go after it.
those are pretty y'all. I think that's beautiful. And I think one of the keys to this is using the hair dryer, you have to put the hair dryer a little bit before the part of the paint that you want to change, not right on top of it. Um, that's one thing. I think that's already pretty much kind of come back to the center. I think we can, yeah, I think we can go ahead and tilt. But that's the most beautiful blown out one I've ever seen. Look at these cells coming up in here. Um, it's gorgeous. And the colors just pop like crazy, um, which I knew they would with the bright tone and the color art pigments. That uh, is a really fantastic combination there. And I don't want any of that good stuff to pour off, so I'm going to put my hands up as a dam when I'm tilting. That is gorgeous. Look at all the cells. That glue in the color really does help. Nobody else is doing that, but it is uh, a fantastic idea, I think, even though it was my idea. I think it was a great idea because I've done that a couple of times. I did it with the last pour I did, the one that I did not film, and uh, I'll show y'all that piece whenever I dry it and get it resined because it's pretty enough to resin. This is amazing. This is going to definitely get resined. Um, pouring back to the center now. But yeah, that's all I'm doing. Um, that's how I'm doing them. Um, and if anybody is struggling with these, please don't hesitate if you have questions or something because that's how I figured it out. I finally had to ask. I, I looked on there and I found somebody that I thought was doing it right, Jen Neal. And uh, I contacted her and told her what was going on with mine. And, of course, she referred me to one of her videos, and uh, I noticed that she was using the Glidden paint. And I had read, or seen, not read, but seen in a video that you could use Color Smart from Walmart. And it's cheaper. So I was using that. I think that's the most beautiful pour I've ever seen. Definitely the most beautiful one I've ever done, I think. Anyway, um, when I realized that she was using the Glidden, I said, well, I'm going to try her recipe. And in so doing, I want to do it exactly like she's doing it. So I'm going to go get this Glidden paint. And I had to drive to Lufkin 45 minutes away to get it. And it's more expensive. Um, not by like a whole lot, but it is. And so I went and got it and it changed my whole world. Because I was having some spots in mine, and I was having crazy, no more of that, as soon as I started trying the Glidden. Now, I had a little bit of GAC 800. Uh-oh, the tape has caused that to pour over there. I don't want that up there. I'll have to get rid of that. Um, the I had a little GAC 800 to my uh, pillow paint. It's Glidden Semigloss Base 1, and then you add like about a half inch of um, GAC 800 to prevent crazing. Now, I've never had any crazing since I started doing the Glidden, but I started doing those two things at the same time. So I can't speak for what the Glidden alone would do. Oh my gosh, that's pretty. I'm not even gonna mess with it anymore. I like it just like it is. That looks like a bloom. That is one big bloom, and that is what I was going for. I knew I'd get it sooner or later. It's just that everybody wants to do on these bigger ones, they pour three or four puddles out, and 
make several blooms and then they blend together, but they don't look like a bloom anymore. They look like a pretty abstract painting, but they don't look like a bloom. And I thought, I want to get it as big as I can get it. And this is the biggest size canvas I usually work with. I, I have worked with bigger ones. I've worked with one that's three feet by six feet, but this is the biggest size I usually use. And this is the size I was going for. And that is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, let me show y'all up close. Uh, if I have enough juice, if I cut off, I will show you. Um, like on the next video or when I get it resin. But uh, I'm so excited. That is what I wanted right there. That is what I was going for. That's one big bloom. It's obviously a bloom. And yet it's got cells. Because a lot of people's blooms don't ever get cells in them. And I think it's because they don't use silicone. I mean, the mixes that you use to make blooms don't have Floetrol in them. Except the cell activator. Whoops. I dropped a blob on it. Let me get that off just a second and I'll continue. Okay. I don't want that blob on there. It dropped off my arm. You know, that's the reason the bloom mixtures work is because, you know, without any silicone is because... The only thing that has Floetrol in it is the cell activator. The other things don't. And so that's why the cell activator causes you to have cells. Because Floetrol, silicone, and heat are what make cells. But it's not enough. It hadn't been enough for me. So I figured why not add silicone to your colors and your cell activator. Glue helps with cells. So why not add some of that. So that's where I'm coming up with what I've done but no, nobody else that I know of does that stuff they um they don't and and some of them do some beautiful work look at that like I said I, I, far be it for me to ever say you have to do it the way I do it I would never say that uh what I will say is if you want the kind of you know the same kind of things to happen in your work then maybe you ought to consider uh, the recipes that I'm using. They aren't, I didn't make them up except that stuff I added. Uh, the other stuff I've gotten from research and experimentation. But, um, golly, that's pretty. I am just so happy with that. I'm so happy y'all are here to uh, be with me today. Thank y'all for joining me. I hope y'all are all staying safe and healthy. Um, and join me again. I have lots of content out there. I make videos all day, every day, pretty much. Off and on, you know. Um, but anyway, there's lots there to choose from. Thanks for joining me. I love y'all all. Stay safe, stay healthy. God bless you.